Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the fall 2016 staff meeting. My name is Jim Dice. I'm one of the registered nurse owners here at Twin Oaks Home Care. And you should have the agenda here in front of you. Uh, there are 19 points that we're going to touch on, and in the review section, there is A through O letters. Uh, the first one, since it's fall and winter's coming, uh, is always the driving uh, in wintertime. Uh, because we live in southwestern Pennsylvania, it snows, it can snow six months out of the year, and we need to be prepared. Um, your vehicle, uh, make sure that the tires are in good condition on it. Now's the time to think about that. Make sure that you have some extra supplies in your vehicle. There have been times whenever um, I've actually gotten stuck at a patient's house overnight. It's good to have like a little bathroom bag, uh, a change of clothes, uh, some snacks, uh, maybe some drinks and a little cooler. Um, that's something that I, I like to do. Uh, every time I'm out on the road. Uh, you want to leave a little bit earlier because if it normally takes you 10 minutes to get to a patient's house and we have a little bit of bad weather, it's going to take you 20 to 30 minutes to get to that same patient's house. If you're going to be late, uh, our policy is you're not going to call the patient's home. You're going to call the office and then the office will contact the patient to give them uh, the change in time. Um, also, make sure that your cell phone, that you have it with you and make sure that it's charged. Because if you do get off the road, you're going to have to be able to get a hold of someone uh, to help you. Uh, last thing in that section is uh, we try to pay attention early in the morning to if there are school delays in certain areas. And what we like to do is we also can run on a delay. There are other things we can do as well as we can move shifts. We can um, move them to a different day. Or some of the shifts, if it's just housekeeping, we can cancel them all together. Um, and that's going to be depending on the condition of that client. If that client's a diabetic and they need blood sugar testing, they have to have a meal, you know, they need help with their um, getting their medications and there's no one there, then that's definitely someone that uh, we need to get to and we will also, in those types of situations, provide transportation in a four-wheel drive vehicle if the employee doesn't have one. Number two, our infection control. Uh, this is the same also. Uh, we do annual TB training. Uh, tuberculosis is something that um, can be spread easily with all the influx of uh, immigrants that are coming into our country. Uh, it's something to be concerned about. Uh, what it does is it gets down into someone's lung. It's, it's airborne. You breathe it in. It could stay dormant there for years, 20, 30, 40 years, and then you can actually become active and be able to give it to someone else at that point in time. That's called transmissible. Um, <clears throat> that's why it's important for us to get the annual TB shots. If you're due between now and April, you'll get yours today before you leave. Uh, the MRSA, uh, that's an infection that's out there. It's very, uh, it's difficult to treat. Uh, problem with too many antibiotics in someone's systems is it's, it's very uh, tough on your kidneys. Uh, so the best thing to do is to not get it. And that's why hand washing is so important. And anytime we're dealing with any type of secretion from a human body, we put gloves in every home. And if you're low on any any of those uh, supplies in the home, you want to make sure that you get a hold of us. Um, next is the Ebola. It isn't as prevalent this year as it was last year, but people that are traveling any, to any third world countries and coming back, uh, the Ebola virus, there is no cure for it. So uh, it just has to run its course, and it has a very high uh, morbidity rate where people don't make it. Um, and something that's newer over this summer is the Zika virus, which is also a virus that has to run its course. There is no treatment for it. Um, and that's through mosquitoes. Um, it's more prevalent in the Florida southern border area right now. But if, again, if someone's traveling to another country coming back, it can cause uh, severe birth defects in children. But it can also affect adults, you know, uh, just like flu-like symptoms for, you know, 10 to 21 days. Um, and then we do keep track of uh, infections at our office. There are some that are mandatory uh, report events that have to be reported to Department of Health. Um, number three, uh, Office of Long-Term Living. We, uh, since we provide Medicaid services and they are through the waiver programs, there are several things that they require. 
Some of them include preventing of abuse and exploitation of our clients. Uh, so if we're in a house and we see where someone's being abused by someone else or if they're abusing themselves, which would be neglect, self-neglect, then that's something that we have to report. Uh, there's two ways to do it. You can report directly or you can bring it to my attention and we can report it together. Um, I would rather you come to me and us go together to report that. Um, that way there may be more information that I can gather to help you in that process. But we are considered mandatory reporters. Uh, letter B is the prevention of fraud and financial abuse. Not just could it be physical, but it could be someone coming in taking their food, their medicine, uh, any of their personal belongings, their money, using their MAC card inappropriately, things like that. That would also be, need to be brought to our attention so we can file the necessary reports. And um, C is the Adult Protective Services. That's who we deal directly with. There is a, um, a national toll-free hotline for Adult Protective Services. I'll try to get that and get that on there. It's not on there right now. Uh, number four, uh, also included in that Office of Long-Term Living um, reports is the critical incidents is what it's called. And it's where something is so severe in this type of situation, not only would you get a hold of Adult Protective Services, but we have to get a hold of Harrisburg. And that's the Office of Long-Term Living. There, there's A through F there, a death, injury, or hospitalization as a result of not being able to provide services to a client. Uh, letter B, allegations of abuse, neglect, exploitation, or abandonment when someone just leaves and someone's bedfast. You can't leave that type of a person unattended. Letter C, any misconduct by an aging waiver service provider or their rep representative. Uh, D, Elopement, that's if someone just leaves and doesn't come back. That goes along with the um, abandonment issue. And then E, any accident or injury that requires treatment beyond first aid like a hospitalization. And then F, any incidents that result in temporary or permanent service termination that may place the client at risk. And that could do with like utilities. Uh, we had a flood not long ago that was in our area. Uh, patients actually had to be evacuated out of their residences. They lost power, they lost heat. Uh, those are types of things that we have to be aware of so that we can report them to the appropriate people. Um, next, <clears throat> number six, I'm um, sorry, number five. Uh, Twin Oaks Home Care, our quality management plan. Um, we're always trying to do things better. We're always trying to provide a better service, to have a better outcome. And with the managed care organizations that are going to be taking into effect on January 1st of 2017, um, they're looking for the best companies out there. Uh, we're going to have to have contracts with them and clients, uh, sorry, providers that are not doing a good job taking care of patients in the home, they're not going to get contracts with these insurance companies. So that's why we have these phone call spot checks that we do. That's why we come out. Uh, to patients' homes, and we fill out on-site uh, employee and client spot checks. We're looking for safety in every home that we go into. Um, any client complaints that come into our office, you know, they go through the chain of command, and we want to make sure that uh, the patients are satisfied if there's a complaint that comes in. Ninety percent of the time, it's just a schedule change that is required. Um, but the law through uh, Office of Long-Term Living is that we have to hit a 50% satisfaction rate. I believe we're well over that. We're probably at 90% or higher. Um, and that's something that we uh, monitor on a monthly basis. Uh, number six, our workplace violence policy. Uh, understand this, that if you're in a patient's home, that it should be safe. There should not be any criminal acts that should be um, performed against you. Uh, that's why we tell people, you know, if you're going to go into a house, you know, just take your car keys, don't take your purse in. Someone can get in your purse and take something out of your purse. Uh, we don't want anyone in the home, including the client or any of their family members or neighbors, being abusive toward any of our employees at all. It's your responsibility to bring that to our attention. If it's something that you feel like you're in, in immediate danger, then you're to leave and you're to call us and um, 
we will resolve that issue. Um, there's many steps that we could possibly take um, to get it resolved. Uh, the last step would be we're no longer going to provide services to that client. And we've had to do that in the past. That's not something that happens all the time. But you just need to be aware that if a situation like that in the home ever comes up, that you know how to handle it. You know, protect yourself and make sure that you communicate that with our office. Number seven, uh, emergency preparedness. Again, when situations come up, clients lose utilities. Uh, we can't provide services. There's a bad storm that comes. There's a, a handout that we give to all clients on admission. It's the Pennsylvania Emergency Preparedness Guide. It basically tells them, make sure you have three days worth of food, water, and medicine at all times. Um, water, one gallon per person per day. And then don't forget about the pets because they're also going to need food and water uh, until the emergency is, is over. Uh, they also need to have a backup plan. You know, if, if there is an emergency, where can they go for a couple days until they come back? It could be a nursing home. It could be a family member's residence. Um, it could be a hotel. Um, just everybody needs to have that in the back of their mind if something were to come up. Uh, number eight. Our clear care, uh, what I want to mention at this point in time is that we've been doing this for 10 months now. Um, the policy is that you must clock in and you must clock out on a toll-free clear care system. And um, what's happening is there are people that are not clocking in and clocking out, and it's causing a financial difficulty and a burden, time difficulty here in, in our office for our office staff. So you will see a handout effective January 1st, 2017. If a person does not clock in or clock out for their shift without a valid reason, that they're, they're going to be fined $5 every time that happens. A valid reason would be you go to the patient's house and the patient or family was on the phone or the phone is lost or maybe the phone's not working. Um, uh, another one was if the patient was late getting home, the employee was, had to sit outside and wait for him. Or if the employee is at a doctor's appointment with a patient and they're not there to clock in or clock out. I understand that. Those can happen. But what can't happen and what the insurance companies are going to be looking at whenever they're giving us contracts is are your employees doing what they're supposed to be doing, including clocking in and out appropriately at patients' homes. The only way to stop that and to correct this problem is for there to be a fine in place that will take effect on January 1st, 2017. Um, number nine, this section is just for review only. <clears throat> Letter A through O. Uh, these are policies that everyone should have. Uh, we've developed those over the last 16 years that we've been doing this. Uh, letter A, uh, when you're at a patient's house and you're aware of an appointment that they have, please call that into our office. That allows us to schedule things appropriately. B, your cell phone is to be off when you're in a client's home. No question about it. When we're there, we're there to provide services, not to be on our phone. Um, you are permitted to check your phone during your lunch break. If it's less than four hours, you get a 15-minute break. If it's more than a four-hour shift, you actually get a 30-minute break. We say just make sure your patient is safe before you take your break. Letter C, keep your purse in your car and your personal problems outside of a client's home. Letter D, Housekeeping is still one of the most important things we do. Not only is it for safety, but it's for infection control. Uh, when family members come in and the house is, is well cleaned um, and it smells good and the dishes are done and the beds are made and the floors are clean, um, they're going to not only want to keep our services, they're going to want to recommend us to other clients in their neighborhood. Letter E, errands for the client, still in effect, uh, one day a week. Keep a list on the counter. Uh, if you're at a home and they're asking you to go three, four days a week to the store for them, that's something you need to bring to our attention because we will correct that. Our policy is one day a week we're permitted to go to the closest store. Letter F, uh, if there's a problem in a client's home, make sure that you're reporting that to the office. What I always say is if we're not aware of it, we're not going to be able to fix it. Letter G, um, your attitude is extremely important when we're in clients' homes. Uh, have a positive attitude, be friendly, be kind, be compassionate. Um, letter H, uh, always call line one. Uh, this has been in effect forever since we started. 
uh, because line one is the line that we transfer when our office is closed, or if we have a meeting and we have to go out somewhere, we'll transfer that to our cell phone and we'll take it with us. The 438-1936 or the toll-free number both rings to line one. Letter I, have a voicemail and return calls, texts, and emails from our office promptly. We expect to hear back from an employee within one to two hours. I shouldn't call someone today and they call me back tomorrow. Um, if you need us and you call us, I would assume that you would expect to hear from us within one to two hours. Um, if not sooner, and I would say 99% of the time, you're able to get a hold of us within 30 minutes. And, and I would say most of the time, whenever you call in, you're able to speak to someone directly. That's our goal. Letter J, client no lift form, and the client on the floor, we're still calling 911. If a patient cannot help us transfer, I do not want you getting hurt, and I do not want the client getting hurt. Um, <clears throat> that speaks for itself. Uh, everyone should know that across the board. If it's ever an issue, please bring that to our attention. Letter K, our policy for call-offs has not changed. We still require an eight-hour notice if an employee is going to call off, and the employee has three days to get their excuse into our office. Now what has changed is how an employee can get their excuse to us. They can take a picture of it on their smartphone, they can email it over to us, or they can text message their photo of their excuse over onto our cell phone. That makes it easier, you know, you don't have to drive to the office, uh, that saves a lot of time, it saves a lot of energy. Next is um, letter L. Uh, it's our policy that every employee has direct deposit. That saves a huge amount of time and energy, especially with the U.S. mail system. Uh, we were mailing out 100 paychecks every two weeks and guarantee you there was at least one, maybe two, employees that didn't get their pay. So if you don't have direct deposit, get it. And if you don't want to get direct deposit at a bank, Walmart offers what's called a Bluebird card. And we can load that card with your pay and you can use it just like a Mac card, just like a credit card. Uh, letter M, uh, whenever you're orienting new employees at a patient's home, make sure that you go over the chart with them, make sure that you show them the patient's routine, show them where the pill box is at, where the cleaning supplies are at, and then go over the meals with them, what the patient likes to eat, where they like to eat, etc. Anything specific for that client. Letter N, uh, call sh any shift changes into the office before you leave a patient's house. Even though we're doing the clear care system, if your shift time is going to change, that still has to come to us. And letter O, client transportation. Um, there are several clients, options, waiver, private pay, uh, clients that were able to transport in their vehicle. Either their vehicle or the employee's vehicle. It has to be safe. It has to be during a certain time, not after 10 p.m. at night. Um, and one thing that every employee needs to know is that if a client is a veteran, and we're in there in the VAs providing those services during that time, we are not permitted to transport because the veterans have their own transportation system. Now, three days a week, the VA is paying for it. One day a week, it's a private pay. On that one day a week private pay, we would be able to transport that patient, but not when the veterans are paying for it. Uh, letter 10. Sorry, number 10. That's better. Um, our HIPAA privacy policy, um, all patient information is strictly confidential. We are not permitted to release it unless we're required to do so by law, like if we got a subpoena, or if the patient comes to me and says, hey, Jim, I want you to send this information over to a, a new doctor that I'm getting. Uh, that's the only time we're allowed to release something. So whenever you're entrusted with that information, um, please don't say any anything to anyone in the community. Uh, if someone calls the house and they're asking you questions, the best thing to do is say, you know, would you like to call their family or would you like to speak to the patient directly? Uh, get yourself out of the middle of that. If you and another employer are out in public and you see each other and you're both at the same client's house, you can talk about that client, but you can't mention that client's name. Uh, you might be able to just mention the first name, but uh, any other information like that should not be discussed or anyone else could hear it. And we're all bound by that same HIPAA law. So whenever you co you're communicating with us here at the office, it's okay to do that because we're under that same law. 
were considered a health care provider. On page two, our holiday rotation as the major holidays are coming up. Um, we are required to work every other holiday <clears throat> and the holiday rotation is going to be Thanksgiving, Christmas, Christmas Day, Christmas Eve starting at 3 p.m., New Year's Eve starting at 3 p.m., New Year's Day, and then back through the regular calendar year. Um, you're not permitted to make a special request on a holiday, but what we will take is a preference. If you preferred working one over the other because you have small kids uh, or because your family celebrates at a certain time, then we'll do our best to accommodate that. Um, you just need to let us know that um, probably at least a month before that holiday. And then number 12, our regular office hours. This is something that we need to cover every year, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We are available 24 hours a day. Again, please call line 1. If it's an emergency, you want to dial 911 first, and then once the emergency is handled, you can let, let us know at the office. Number 13, uh, the 211 system is still in effect for southwestern Pennsylvania. It's an information line for elderly people whenever they're dealing with utilities or housing or they have questions regarding government services. Um, keep that in the back of your mind. You can suggest that to your clients when you're out in their homes. Number 14, our uh, Twin Oaks payday calendar. It should be attached for 2017. It will have this, the starting day of that pay cycle. It will have the final day of that pay cycle. And then it will have the actual pay date where that money will be released, be released into your account. Um, number 15. Uh, this time of the year, um, it's important that we hand out to you Twin Oaks brochures and business cards. Uh, there is an employee referral bonus program that's number 17 listed there. So whenever you refer someone to us in the community, um, we're able to, you know, give a financial benefit to the employee that's actually helping us find employees. And a lot of the areas right now we have employees, but what we're looking for is backup. You know, so if someone calls off and they're having a problem with their child or their vehicle, then we need to be able to to stay dependable to those clients in that area. Um, so definitely get some of those today before you leave. Uh, number 16, our AFLAC insurance is still available to employees. If it's something that you're interested in, please see one of the office assistants. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Jerry Fluke. Uh, he will schedule a meeting with you one-on-one -on -one and go over what AFLAC has to offer. It is a reimbursement program, which means you pay for it first, and then they reimburse you for it. Also, at this time, from October 1st to January 1st, December 15th, sorry, um, you can go to healthcare.gov and you can apply for the subsidized health care. Um, that would start January 1st, 2017, and most of my employees will qualify for a subsidy to get health care. Um, and now we'll go to number 18, our home health aid uh, appreciation. Uh, the month of November is actually a home care month. And what we'd like to do is to give our employees a gas card. So today, before you leave, uh, you will get a gas card as part of the November, uh, October staff meeting. Um, and then last on the list is the annual competency test. Uh, that's something that employees must take every year. Uh, it's about 120 questions. Uh, the, the secretaries will help you. Please don't write on the test itself, just write on the answer sheet. You, you are allowed to miss up to 25 and still pass. Uh, what that shows Department of Health when they come in here is that my employees um, can competently care for and provide services to a client in their home. And if you have any questions regarding today's uh, staff meeting, please um, see one of the office assistants or if you need to speak to Don or myself directly, uh, please call in and leave a message and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.